From verdant meadow to glittering shore, scorching desert and frozen waste, tales are told of an epic quest for romance. Dragons are on the prowl to prove that love can bloom on any battlefield. Emric of Kalidor has journeyed across an ocean of stars to reach this moment, but Miao Ying is no ordinary sky serpent, and she's got more dragon blood in her than the whole of Kalidor combined. Honestly, she probably looks down on Emric, and that's why their first date will not be a smooth ride. Immortal Empires is here, that means the long-awaited pairings of Old vs. New, Dragon vs. Dragon, Staunch Spear vs. Harmonious Husbundo have arrived. If Miao Ying looks down on Emric, she's definitely cackling when she sees Dragon Princes, who are just cosplaying at this point, but she might not be laughing for long, because they are a problem for Cathay. Highly mobile, heavily armored cav that can pressure their missiles and artillery, and demolish Jade Lancers in a 1v1. Martial prowess and mastery have been buffed too, deactivating at 25% remaining health now instead of 50%, and leading the army, of course, is the Lord of Dragons himself, riding the majestic Minaith near into battle with powerful dueling debuffs for enemy lords, a crazy strong breath attack, the Dragon Horn for improving his entire army map wide, and the Star Lance for crushing opponents on the charge. Old World and New World Dragons all have improved armor, doubled mass, and cost 100 less, so we'll see what the Apex of their kind can pull off against the mighty Meow, supported by Safari Mage of the Lore of Life, Earthblood, Regrowth, Starwood Staff, and the Book of Hoth, so a well-balanced army, but certainly relying on the elite of Kalidor to provide the majority of the killing power. It's a beautiful summer day in the Empire, and the Celestial Loyalists are out for a stroll. Miao Ying, daughter of the Dragon Emperor, has Earthblood, Missile Mirror, and Talons of Night, but won't feel the need to transform until the moment is ripe for the plucking. Lots of peasants and jade warriors, some armed with crossbows, very cost-efficient unit, and a Fire Rain Rocket to explode those tightly packed Azure formations from afar and keep their archers suppressed and running for their lives. Jade Lancers in the back, Crane Gunners for sniping out expensive targets, and a Wuxing War Compass Astromancer with Uranus Thunderbolt and Comet of Cassandora, boosting spell damage with Mastery of the Elemental Winds. So, as this battle gets underway, Fire Rain Rocket will strike first blood, bringing the pain from downtown, and if you're the Azur here, this approach is going to be rather unpleasant. No two ways about it, being exploded by Katusha rockets is less than ideal, but it's even worse for the High Elves because they rely so heavily on martial prowess to be decent, and they tend to form up in orderly, tightly compact ranks, making them a right target for Michael Bay. Now this is the part in our romance novel where Imric falls in love, Meow screams, the transformation is complete, and Imric is panting and wagging his tail like a dog at the ice cream store. Mama, there goes that dragon. He is shook, and he just straight up doesn't know what to do. What the artillery does, the crane guns and the fire rain rocket are causing all kinds of carnage on the Azur side of the field. High Elf Spearmen being scythed down by pinpoint accurate fire from those Warplock Gisele equivalents. And the archers are a great target for the Fire Rain Rocket, because if you can take out half their formation, their killing power is drastically reduced, which is to say nothing of the disruption and morale damage it causes as well. So, heavy weights fall on the Dragon Prince's shoulders. High Elves are on a time crunch here. They need a way into the back ranks of that sturdy Cathayan build, and 78 speed paired with 110 armor and bronze shields should help on that front. Meanwhile, center of Emric's army is getting shellacked, absolutely smeared on the approach. Full unit of rangers is already dead, and now the attention will shift to the archers. Remember that high elf archers outrange most other skirmish units, but jade warrior crossbows are armored and shielded, so they'll typically outtrade units in a straight up missile duel, but the impetus of this Azur advance has been almost stopped completely by these opening volleys, so Emric's got to do something to silence those guns and create some space and distraction for the rest of the army to catch up. There he goes, straight for the crane guns, while Dragon Prince is on the western edge of the map, draw Miao Ying and some Jade Lancers away from the main line. Lyrian Reavers are there to scream, a couple models caught up up in each other, but Dragon Princes should have a clean disengage, and a meaty Comet of Cassandora raining down from the heavens and exploding a unit of High Elf Archers. Emric of Kalidor and Minaithnir are feasting in the Cathayan back line, with Miao Ying over on the other flank, there's really nothing to slow down or even stop Emric of Kalidor here. That was a really nice comment 
in the back ranks, killing off about half a unit of archers while the fire rain rocket continues to rack up some damage value. The Jade Lancers might be able to pin down the Star Dragon for a moment, but Dragon Princes are ready to overlap the engagement and hit them with that classic hammer and anvil maneuver. Peasant Spearmen trying to block the charge, and they will do so to an extent, but that's a bad spot for Jade Lancers to be. I don't think there's any unit in Warhammer that likes to be pinned between Dragon Prince Elite and Midnight Mirror. That's a tough ask for even the most elite of melee combatants, and Jade Lancers certainly do not fall into that category. So finally, the High Elves have a way to shut down some of the range in the back. Really nice Uranus Thunderbolt on the Cathayan left flank, hitting a blob of Rangers and High Elf Spearmen. Rangers should have gone around the flank there, but notice their mistake and disengage, but they did lose about half of their HP due to their error. And we just saw Dragon Princes killed off a full unit of Jade Lancers quite quickly, so the mobility for Cathay is starting to look a little bit worse for the wear. And now the date of dragons shall commence. The memes are real. A nice candlelight dinner begins with Lord of Dragons lowering her guard, charming the Cathayan princess, but her wrath is unleashed all the same with Talons of Night overcast on the staunch line of spears, and that will melt an entire unit and free up some Jade Warriors. Dragonhorn activated map wide, plus 24 melee attack and fear for all high elf units. While the foot troops are ripped apart by magic, they are powerless to counter. Miao Ying does have additional utility that Imric does not, but she will not defeat the Lord of Dragons in a melee duel. So if things get scary, she can either run or shift back into human form to make use of her heals and smaller hitbox. Limptic charge from the Dragon Princes. Not sure why that was so unimpressive. They're still causing all sorts of problems in the rear and another comet, this time dodged by the knife ears. Rangers seem to be trading pretty evenly with Jade Warriors in the grind. Overcast regrowth to keep the Star Dragon topped off, and now Emmerich is running to make use of that heal. Uranus Thunderbolt mostly missing, Archers dodging out of the way there as well. Though their infantry is looking a bit thin, we got our first Strawberry Milkshake Breath Attack on Warhammer 3. Nice to see that one return. Not lined up perfectly. You'd like to be flush with the flank and lined up on the side so that you can just breathe down the entire length of their formation. Kind of caught them on the edge there, but still dealing a decent amount of damage and making it easier for the High Elves to inundate that back line and perhaps cause some routing amongst those Jade Warrior crossbows. But Miao Ying taking that opportunity while Emmerich was breath attacking and hunting the Crane Guns to cause some terror in the High Elf back line. She's at two-thirds HP and can shift into human form at any point, start earth building to get her back up to full. If the Dragon Princes are free, Jade Warriors and Peasants will not be able to stop their rampage in the rear. They will mostly be up to Miao Ying and perhaps her Talons of Night, which if that catches out the Dragon Princes while they're pinned down, could severely mess them up. Now that is one reason why Yin Casters with Storm of Shadows are typically more meta and a more cost-efficient choice. They can punish over Pursuit more easily with their built-in slows from Storm of Shadows, but they hit nowhere near as hard as Miao Ying, and they'll need her melee ability to take down Minayeth Nir and Emric of Kalidor. Another Talons of Night, but without the ability to slow down the Dragon Princes, they are able to dodge the worst of those effects, and in fact, the Jade Lancers probably got ripped up a little bit more than the Dragon Princes did because they pursued into the storm. Emmerich is disappoint. Miao Ying just went back into human form, but she'll probably return into dragon form as soon as that comes back off cooldown. In the meantime, probably some Earthbloods to keep the center healed up nice and fresh. Another Star Dragon Breath, taking Jade Warriors down to half HP in a single cast. Nicely dodged. It would have probably eviscerated the entire formation if they had not moved in time. Star Dragon, typically, again, you want to be a little bit further away with the Breath Attack to make sure you get more coverage. Their Laser Beam is just so hyper-focused that if you're close, there's not a whole lot of spread. So the further away they are, the more effective that is for Wave Clear. The closer you are, the more effective it is for taking out single targets. And that's really what the Star Dragon Breath is meant for, killing high-value single entities. But using it on Miao Ying, especially without a net, is going to be problematic. Earthblood heals in the center, Wuxing War Compass still topped off and at full HP, while the Safari Mage of the Lore of Life 
and her Dragon Prince compadres trying to deal with all this infantry. And Cathay still has a decent amount of that remaining. Some peasant long spearmen, a bunch of jade warriors, and some of their crossbows still online as well. Is that a Uranus Thunderbolt or a Talons? Of, that was a Talons of Night trying to catch out the Dragon Princes. But yeah, no Storm of Shadows, no 45% slow to keep them caught up in that vortex. And that means dealing with these Dragon Princes is going to be problematic for Miao Ying as we move into the late game. But sync kills are working now, and that means we get some awesome choreography as she sucks the soul out of these Rangers. That is so dope. One of my favorite sync animations in the trilogy. And from my understanding, there are a bunch of new sync animations between game one, game two, and game three factions like Scarbrand fighting Griffins that sort of thing so i'm very excited to be able to show some of those off especially once we can pair that with the blood pack which should hopefully not be too much longer of a wait miao ying is messing up the rangers in the center you see a bunch of them routing off now and the spears will be soon behind archers have a little bit of ammunition left but not a lot of bodies and the third and final star dragon breath finishing off a regiment of jade warriors Miao Ying will probably take that opportunity to shift back into Dragon form momentarily, because if she doesn't, that Wuxing War Compass is freaking dead. Lord of Dragons taking the Astromancer's stats to 0-0, zero, zero, and even the Mage is joining in on the Bully. Here comes the Scream, and here comes the true Mother Meowest. Wuxing War Compass twerking in displeasure, and soon the Dragons will clash once again. There's the Cav. Leary Reavers and Dragon Princes leading the charge into the crossbows, which Cathay can no longer keep protected, but the Lord of Nangao will try her damnedest all the same. Astromancer has routed, and the Cathayan left flank is likely to buckle any second now as Emric rips them apart. Spears near the back of the map, pressuring the archers, but unlikely to catch them before they route. Certainly more bodies on the field for Cathay than the High Elves, but do they have the firepower to bring down Emric and the Dragon Princes? It will be up to Miao Ying, she might need a dirty Talons of Night to clear out the Heavy Cav. They're looking pretty healthy at this stage in the game, but the Mage is under threat from the Dragon herself. Emric is ready to take the fight to her. Dragon Prince is from behind. Hammer and Anvil, maybe? Nope, she got into the air in time, and the Dragon Prince will look to retreat, while some more of them are clearing out the Chaff over near the edges of the map. The second date of Dragons, a dance this time. Spectacle for all to see from below. Dragonhorn plus 24 melee attack. Combine that with the 80 charge bonus of those Dragon Princes and Jade Warriors. And Peasant Long Spearmen will just melt under their charge. More peasants being run down near the edges. And though the High Elves don't have any infantry to speak of whatsoever at this point, they've got two units of Dragon Princes and a very healthy Emric of Kalidor. So Miao Ying will need to pull out some kind of miracle if they want to take this game. They still have some bodies on the field, but it's not going to be enough. Dragon Princes can pretty much cycle charge the rest of this infantry into perpetuity, and Miao Ying simply cannot stand up to Emric of Kalidor in a straight melee fight. She would need support from units like those Righteous Lances of Wei Jin would actually be a great companion for Miao Ying in a matchup like this one. I think they'd actually be a very good unit against the High Elves in general because they allow you to establish aerial superiority. And more than that, they can also kill Dragon Princes. Cathay doesn't have a tremendous amount of tools right now for dealing with heavily armored cavalry. They have crane guns and they have cannons, of course, but a good player is not just going to let you shoot their heavy cav. So having something with a lot of speed that can rear charge and prevent the Dragon Princes from getting their charge bonus off would be super good. I think the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin would actually be very good in this matchup. But they're not in the game right now. They're not in this build, actually, because I don't think the builds have been merged yet. So Dragon Princes, while their damage value wasn't sky high, they did, I wouldn't say they ran free, but they were able to deal with the Jay Lancers no problem at all. And from there, keeping the crossbows online and shooting. Despite the fact that they got good value this game, they just weren't able to do enough damage. And Miao Ying certainly had some trouble beating Emric in a duel. I like the Fire Rain Rocket pick. It really shut down a lot of the archers and the infantry on the way in. But Emric was MVP, no question about it. 
3,100 damage value. A lot of that against Miao Ying, but he also had some decent breath attacks too. And he didn't really even have those high value targets to breathe into. So the fact that he was able to get over 3,000 just by getting some good breath attacks into like Jade Warriors and such. And of course, in his duel with Meow, well, it ended up working out pretty great. And he seems like he's going to be a solid pick in this matchup for sure. Meow Ying was pretty beastly. She got some great talents of Night. But of course, having a slow from Storm of Shadows and a Lore of Yin caster to set up those talents would have helped tremendously against a unit like the Dragon Princes. But yeah, the Fire Rain Rocket was solid. Some of those comments of Cassandora were pretty cool. And overall, very happy to be able to bring this meme to life for you in our first battle on Immortal Empires. Lots more to come. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.